Okay, Danny. So we just came from Kiryat Yarim. Yarim, and so the Ark was there for 20 years. It was on its way to Jerusalem. That poorest soul saw the Ark was falling, and he reached out and he touched it, and he and died. And died instantly. Instantly. So. And was there lightning? What does it say? It doesn't say. It doesn't say By anything. Uh, boom, he's dead. So David decides to stop the procession mm -hmm. and, and stop and, and park it. Yeah. Okay, let it rest. It's angry. Okay. And the spot where it was placed for three months yeah. was called Bet Oved Edom Hagiti. Okay. Very mysterious name. We don't really know what it stands for, but it had to be a holy place. Okay. Now, we are now halfway between Kiryat Yarim and Jerusalem right. in a valley called Moza. It's Mozart. known from the book of Joshua. It's mentioned in the Second Temple period. Some even suggest that this is Emmaus, where Jesus appeared okay. after his resurrection. Wow. But when they decided to improve the highway above our heads, mm -hmm and make this uh, big uh, bridge, uh, salvage excavations were carried out. Okay. And they found, they found some interesting stuff uh, beneath the anchors of the other parts of this bridge. Okay. But here is where they found the true sensation. Okay, now I see all these circles. They look fascinating to me, but I don't know anything. Yes. What so, are these things? So granaries, these are silos. These are to keep uh, grainer, uh, grains and they are coming to early Iron Age. Okay, when so the Israelites settled in this land, the book of Joshua, or even more the book, uh, the book of Judges, they settled in small farms and contained liquids in big jars and contained the grains in big silos. Okay, so you would expect to find something like this in, uh, in a community from that time? Yes, but I didn't have a clue that there was such a site here. Wow. It was a big surprise to, sh to see that Moza was settled in the book of Judges. It's not mentioned in the book of Judges. It's only mentioned once and in the book of Joshua. So that alone was a surprise and especially the scale. Usually the silos are about a quarter of the size of this. And maybe, I don't know, four or five. Look how many you have here. So, so this many, this size, what does that tell you then? It's a large It's a community? regional center for collecting grains is okay. what this is suggesting. There's, this was a big fertile valley. Yeah. They they grew wheat and they collected it here. And if uh, if the ark was being transported from Kiryat Yarim to Jerusalem, it suggests this is a path, this is a route, this is some yes. place that you would have uh, commerce, trade, yes. all that kind of stuff. Yes, but then we found a building next to this you know, storage area. Okay. Which is possibly where the ark was actually kept. You're kidding me. Let me show you. Okay. A, it's a building built over the edge of the granaries. In fact, the courtyard still has some of those granaries. So this this is pretty cool. I've been on a bunch of archaeology sites before, uh, but I don't know. There's something special about this. And actually, where I'm staying on this on this trip, I'm staying just just up the road at a friend's house and uh, I can't believe I've been, I've been driving by this this site for really for years and I have no, no idea. People drive here by the thousands every day over the very spot where the ark was placed for three months without being aware of it. Because this is one of the busiest highways isn't it? It's probably the very busiest highway in all of Israel. The, the road between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. Yeah. Yes. And all roads lead to Jerusalem, and this is number one. This is the main road to Jerusalem. And yes. it's called number one. It's called road number one, yes. <laughs> the British gave it that number, and we kept it. He kept it. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is where it got really, really interesting because, and, and this is still exposed. Everything else is covered up, but for some reason, this is left exposed even now. It's a square. Ooh, some truck diver is yeah. upset there. <laughs> and first of all, it's square in shape. It's made of unhewn stones. It's just a bit less than two and a half cubits by two and a half cubits, meaning it's a biblical measurement. And they found um, figure, figures, clay figurines around it. Okay. Clay figurines suggest this area had a cultic function. So, so okay, just, just to take a step back, 
What's the significance? You, you've mentioned a couple of times unhewn stones. Why is that significant? The Bible tells us that God likes, likes to be venerated in the form of animal sacrifices done on altars which are square, five cubits by five cubits. So this is a smaller version of it. And the stone should be natural stones. Natural stones. So that means not uh, not polished, not, not, polished, not polished, not shaped in okay. any way. What's missing is the horns. But look how the cornerstones are bigger. And maybe it did have horns made out of wood or something that didn't last. But both the shape and the figurines found around it suggest people did relate to this as a holy place, as a place of some sort of sacrifice. Okay. Okay. Wow. And that's a big surprise, especially considering that you have silos right next to it. It is as if the, the storage of the grains is combined with the ritual here. Okay, so it's it's just occurring to me that so this is the time between when the ark was at Shiloh. No, and the it's way after. It's still yeah, but between. So but this is this is the time between Shiloh and between Jerusalem. Solomon building the temple. Yes, the last almost the last station. So they had to there. So because I think I think of all the rituals at the temple, but this is in between that time. So they had the rituals for the tabernacle. Exactly. So, in Shiloh, it was kept in a, in a temporary yes, temple, a, yeah. a mobile temple. It's a called mobile. the Tent of Meeting or Tabernacle. Yes, and, and so this is a time between that, between the official temple and between the temp tabernacle. No. It's been taken by the Philistines. Yes, inflicting a plague, yeah. returned to the Israelites, inflicting a plague even among the Israelites, yeah. placed in isolation as if it was quarantine on the hilltop called Kiryat Yarim. For 20 years. For 20 years. Yeah. And then David, finally, when he takes over Jerusalem, he brings it to Jerusalem, but then it kills someone on the way. Right. So they stop so, it and place it halfway on, in between. But only for three months. Yes. But three months would be enough time for them to build this stuff. Is that, am I getting that right? The correct I think that there was a temple here to begin with. Ah, okay. And because it caused a death to someone, they said, let's put it in that temple. Ah, okay. That's what I think. All right. It. And then they either already had the altar or they put this altar in for the temporary sacrifices. No, I, I think it existed before and it also continued to exist after. Okay. Archaeology shows that actually this temple continued to function even centuries later. Centuries later. Yes, which is surprising. But then the name is Bet Oved Edom, meaning maybe it's an Edomite temple. Ah, okay, okay. And that means the ark was actually placed in an Edomite temple for three months. Wow. Yes, but but the Edomites, the Moabites, you know, they weren't always enemies with no. the Israelites. No, at times they were were with them. Yeah, we know that David had a loyal officer called Uriah the Hittite. Yeah. So yes. those neighbors were not always necessarily neighbors. Right. Even David himself went to Achish, the Philistine king of God. Yeah, when point. Saul was trying to kill yeah, him. You know, yeah, it's okay. a, who, my enemy at other time can be my best friend. Yeah. You know, it all depends on the circumstances. And we see that today in the Middle East, right? That oh, not, much has, not much has changed. <laughs> who would believe that the Saudis and the Israelis are, you know, best buddies right now? Yeah, that is crazy. We're about to probably sign a peace treaty soon. Wow. Yes, Man. the Saudis. It's still happening. The same stuff that happened 3,000 years ago is still happening yes, today. Yes, some things never change. Okay. And then the altar leads into a building. Look at this clear wall. Mm -hmm. The wall on the opposite side is now protected. You cannot see it, but you can see another silo. More silos. Okay. And it proved to be a building oriented to the west. Yeah. With gradual increasing sanctity, meaning the Holy of Holies is over there. Wow. Okay. All right. So, so this isn't a joke. This is a real. This is a real thing. I know. I've met other people that have theories about where the ark is, but we're talking about where the ark. I'm not was. saying the ark is no, no. here anymore. No, we're talking about where the ark was, right? Yes. So we're not trying to say we know where the ark is. We're saying where the ark most was. likely could have been at place one time. for a, a, a certain period of time yes and, and where it's do you not think? just me saying this mm -hmm. it's i'm following here a scholarly line the first to suggest this was professor nadav naman from tel aviv university okay, okay? it's not some tabloid suggesting this it's a <laughs> reputed scholar of a reputed university making that assumption 
Okay, so you're taking me to the Holy of Holies. Now, I haven't had a mikvah. Uh, am I, am it's I, okay, because uh, it has not been exposed yet. Okay, it's, all right. It's still hiding somewhere here. Okay. This summer, yeah. they're going to expose this area, which is believed to be the Holy of Holies. And I'm only asking this, Chris. What if, what if they'll find here a big, flat slab of stone at the dimensions of the Ark of the Covenant? So, wow! if they find a, this flat stone you're talking about, that's where you believe the Ark would have if sat. If it's the same dimension, the like same the dimension. stone found in Beth Shemesh? Yeah. Oh my God. Literally, oh my God. Yeah, Literally. Yeah. It doesn't get more oh my Ark, God than this. Um, I mean, this is better than Indiana Jones. This right? is the real stuff. This is, this is, is not thing. Hollywood. This is science. This is real science and history and archaeology and religion, everything, all rolled up into one. And yes. we're here with Danny the Digger Herman, and you have a YouTube channel. What's your YouTube channel? Danny the Digger. Danny the Digger. <laughs> There's a link below in my description. And please, if you're not already already following this guy, please follow him. He's got a lot of amazing content. And if you're coming on a tour to Israel, if you can at all get him, he's pretty popular, right? <laughs> but uh, a lot of people know me. You know yep, that, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we are here, standing at the site of where the Ark very likely could have been as in red in, in, in one of the books of Samuel. I'll put the, uh, the actual uh, chapter and verse up on the screen because uh, I'm not competent enough to, to say which one it is. But this is very cool. And this is, the only, this is the only place in the world you can find this kind of stuff is right here in Israel. And if you're a believer in Christianity, Judaism, you know, this is it. This is ground zero. And what have here, you found there? Here, maybe a little pot of some offering presented to the ark when it was placed here. Who knows wow. the context of this? Very but cool. This... Thank you so much, Danny. Thanks for including me uh, hey, my on, pleasure. Your, on your journey. And uh, you know what, guys? Keep watching and follow this guy. And we're doing a little teaser. Maybe, maybe we'll get lucky and we'll have a TV series. Hey, and... we're on a mission from God. Yes, that's right. Somebody's <laughs> so got to do it. be with us. Yes, follow us. Follow this journey. Very cool. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys Ciao. next time.